right, a compound inequality is a, an interval set that has two inequalities that are connected by either an and or an or. And I'm going to show you the interval notation form as well because that's the way that you're going to be uh, entering your answers. And so just very basically, if I give you um, a set, x is greater or is less than 0 or x is greater than 3, and this is an example of a compound inequality. Okay. When you look at the, so the, this is the inequality form of it, the number line form. Now how many critical numbers do you have in your solution set? <coughs> now you have two. You have zero and you have three. Okay. And you just treat each interval separately. So with the ors, you're going to treat them separately. So the x is less than zero. So less than zero is to the left. So here's your solution set. Okay. Is zero included in the set? Is there an equal to in the inter inequality? No, so it's a parenthesis. The next interval is x is greater than three. So from this critical point of three, greater than is all points that are to the right of it. So here's the shaded portion of the solution set. Is three included in the set? No, so once again, it's a parenthesis. Okay. The ors you can think of like the ors of a boat. Right. Okay. If you look at a boat coming at you, okay, it's the or is going to have a compound inequality where the intervals extend to either side. Okay, so it'll look like the ors of a boat. Okay, the compound inequality with the and. Okay, so if you have something like this. Okay, x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 1. Okay, here when you're looking at this. Okay, you can condense this into one single inequality form. Okay, the and means that your x is going to be in the middle. If x is greater than or equal to negative 2, let's start with the negative 2 here. Your critical points are negative 2 and 1, so we'll put them in the order they appear. Negative 2 to the left, 1 to the right. x is going to be in the middle. Okay, it's greater than or equal to negative 2. So does the inequality symbol open up to the x or away from the x? It opens to the x. Okay. And then here, does the inequality open to the x or to the 1? To the 1. So this is our inequality notation. Okay. We condense it into 1. It becomes sandwiched. in between. Okay, so the x is sandwiched in between in the and compound inequality. And when you look at the graph of this, it's the same concept. Label your critical points, negative 2 and 1. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So it's everything to the right of negative 2. So you're looking at this set. Is it going to be a parenthesis or bracket there? Uh, bracket. Has the equal to, so it's a bracket. And, so and means it's sandwiched, so your interval is going to be sandwiched in between 1, so x is less than 1, so we need to go to the left of 1. And is 1 included in our solution set? No. So we have a parenthesis here. And so this is your graphical form. Okay? So it looks like a big sandwich. Right? Okay. So the and is sandwiched, the or is the ors of a boat. Okay, so when you look at the interval notation for this, okay, let's talk about those. Are there questions on these? Because these are the ones that are a little bit easier to see. I want to talk about the interval notations because that's not in your book, and I want to make sure that you guys are clear on the other stuff. Any questions on these two forms? This is kind of what your book is covering. Okay, but all the answers that I posted are in interval notation, so you'll get practice using that or interpreting that too. 
All right, so let's look at the interval notation for the AND because it's a little bit easier. Our X is our solution set sandwiched in between two limits. So when you write your uh, when you write your interval notation, what you're going to do is the same rule that we did. Start with your lower limit, negative 2, followed by your upper limit, 1. Is negative 2 included in the set? Yes. yes, so bracket at negative 2. Is 1 included in the set? No, so parentheses. This is your interval notation. Now notice it, it mirrors the graphical form, right? It's bracket negative 2, 1, parentheses. Notice there's no x. When you write interval notation, and this is a common mistake even for ev all students, so including when, when I go over this with uh, honors geometry students, and they make the same mistake, and a couple of you made that mistake on your quiz. When you write interval notation, you never include an x. There's no variable in it. You're always going to put the limiting numbers or infinity, and that's it. Okay, let's look at the or compound inequality. This one is the most challenging as far as uh, writing the interval notation and because you have how many different interval sets in that solution? We have this whole set, everything less than zero, and we have a separate set, everything greater than three. So your interval notation for this is going to be two different sets. So you have to do each set individually. So what interval notation would represent this left set? What's the lower limit? Negative infinity, right? The lowest, the furthest to the left is negative infinity. And in this set, what's the furthest to the right? It stops right here at this critical point, zero. Okay. You can never include infinity. Zero has a parenthesis, it's not included. Okay. And then we look to the interval on the right. On the right, what's the furthest point to the left? The three. What's the furthest point to the right? Positive infinity. You can never include infinity. Three is not included, so it's a parenthesis. Okay, and then the final thing, this is called set notation, if you were to look it up online. And the final thing is, when you have two sets that make up your solution, you join them with a capital U. The U represents, in, no, in set notation, the union of sets. So it's just, you're going to see that U. All it means is there's two different sets for that particular solution.